Hi guys, Vale here and welcome back to another counterplay video. This time we're going to be talking about the newest champion to hit the rift, Zeri. So hopefully this can help you out while playing against her. So what does the champion do? Well, Zeri is an electrifying marksman focused on lighting up the summoner's rift with her intense movement speed and static shiv-like attacks. Zeri is a unique marksman in the fact that her Q basically replaces her auto attack to farm and harass and then her auto attack gets charged up and deals bonus damage and slows. Zeri is all about maximizing damage and movement and alongside her added mobility she can be very hard to get hold of. So what are her strengths and weaknesses? Well Zeri has very high movement speed and mobility allowing her to kite and juke to her heart's content. Zeri also has an amazing dash on her E as well as her poking W that can both be greatly extended over walls. Zeri has high consistent damage while also contributing high burst windows with her charged up attacks and her W. Zeri can also absorb shields by attacking someone who has one, which also works amazingly well with her as she additionally gains movement speed while she's shielded. In a game where shields are pretty OP at the moment, this gives her a very abusable element to her kit, especially for a passive. Although Zeri is highly mobile and she relies heavily on movement speed to dash in and out of combat, she needs to keep attacking to keep up this quality, so landing some CC or outranging her massively reduces her effectiveness, especially if you can actually stall out her ultimate duration. Although Zeri does feel quite hard to punish, as soon as her E is down she has no real form of escape, and it has a pretty long cooldown, especially in the early game, so this does give you a big window to force fights with her. Zeri is also still a marksman, so she dies extremely quickly due to how fragile she is. As long as your focus is on point and you prioritise killing her first, you should be good to go. So now let's take a look at Zeri's kit and abilities so you can fully understand how she actually works. Zeri's passive, as we spoke about earlier, allows her to absorb shields when she attacks someone who is shielded, and she also gains a movement speed boost when she's shielded. You want to be really careful of the timing of your shields as this may allow her to chase or even escape. Zeri's Q is her main damaging ability and she maxes this first. It's a skill shot that fires a burst of 7 rounds in the target direction. Zeri's Q basically replaces her auto attack, so it's her main way of farming and trading in general. Zeri's auto attack is charged up by her Q and any units travelled up to a maximum of 100 charge. Her auto attack consumes that charge to deal bonus damage and slow her enemies. Zeri's W is another skill shot that fires an electric pulse in the target direction and it deals magic damage to the first target hit and slows them. If Zeri uses this ability over walls though, the range is greatly extended and it deals magic damage and slows all enemies in the area instead of just one target. It also grants sight of the location so it can be a good way for her to check brushes and blind spots. You're going to want to be careful when you lose sight of Zeri near walls and terrain as she can use this to slow you and then set herself up for an easy kill opportunity on you. Zeri's E is a dash and alongside her movement speed it's her main form of mobility. Without terrain it's a simple dash but she can use it over walls to massively increase the distance it travels. This can allow her to engage, escape or just get back to lane or around the map very quickly. Zeri can also cast her W or her ultimate whilst using this dash so be really careful not to get comboed as she dives through those walls. Zeri's ultimate is an AoE damaging ability that deals magic damage to all enemies it hits. If it hits at least one enemy champion, Zeri becomes overcharged for 6 seconds and gains 3 stacks of overcharge per champion hit. Each stack grants her 2% bonus movement speed. Zeri gains a stack of overcharge each time she hits an enemy champion with a charged basic attack or ability, refreshing the duration of overcharge by 2 seconds in the process. Zeri's Q also becomes a chained attack and it also attacks faster when she's overcharged. Zeri will look to use this as early as possible during the fight to constantly extend its duration and make the most out of its benefits. If you see her use it, try and outrange her and wait for it to time out. The more she can hit you, the longer she'll be stronger for. So at what periods of the game is Zeri at her best? Well Zeri is strongest in the mid to late game where she has her core item build and her damage really starts ramping up. Try to keep her at range to avoid her abusing her ultimate or to save your important CC abilities for her. Zeri is definitely weakest in the lane phase where you can hide behind minions and allies to avoid her Q poke and she hasn't really got the items she needs to really start popping off. Try to punish her pre-6 as well as she's a lot better in jewels once she's got her ultimate. So the early game is by far the best period of the game to punish Zeri. Her fighting and dueling power gets much stronger when she's got her ultimate, so be cautious around her level 6 power spike. You want to make sure you're staying behind the minion waves at all times to avoid her consistently landing that Q on you. It's her main way of trading and farming, so avoiding it greatly reduces her effectiveness, especially in lane. You can see when Zeri's fully charged by the bar underneath her health bar. Make sure you're constantly being aware of this and avoiding her using it on you. After she's wasted it, you can use this window to trade with her. Pushing Zeri in also sometimes forces her to farm with the charge instead of saving it to trade. This is a pretty viable way of nullifying her laning, but be cautious you don't push too often as you'll leave yourself open to ganks. 
You should also consider warding areas near terrain like the alcoves in lane. She can use these to land her W easier and set herself up to all in afterwards with her E. When Zeri's E is down though, it has a very long cooldown, especially in the early game, so this could be a great period of time to fight her. In the mid game, Zeri should have a few items by now and should be able to start pumping out some serious damage. Make sure you bear in mind just how strong she is and be careful fighting her if she has an item advantage. Zeri packs a lot of mobility and movement speed which allows her to get into fights in the river and skirmish quicker than other bot laners. You want to be careful when you're contesting dragons, objectives or even just fighting in the jungle as Zeri could get there in a glance by dashing over walls and fighting in choke points with her W and her ultimate. In the mid game fights, Zeri will look to constantly hit champions with charged attacks to extend her ultimate's duration. If you see she's popped her ultimate, try and back off and stall for it to go down before fighting her. Zeri is not a champion you want to forget about, as if you leave her unchecked, she can play to her strengths and really punish you for it. Make sure you're keeping your important CC for her and burst her down quickly. If you don't have any CC, try and outrange her and bully her from a distance instead. Zeri's late game is really where she fully comes to life. Like any marksman, she'll deal some significant damage by now and really start to hurt. Be sure to follow the same principles as the mid game when it comes to locking her down and bursting her out in fights and making it your top priority to take her out first. In full blown team fights, Zeri will just fight like any other marksman. If you dive too far for her or leave her unchecked, she can kite for days and really punish you on the back foot. Try to wait for her to overextend or get a bit too confident and then punish her for it. You'll also need to be very careful that you don't overcommit and chase this champion near terrain. Her dash gives her a get out of jail free card and there's no way you're going to be able to match her mobility with this spell unless you're fighting in open lanes. Additionally, when fighting in confined spaces, Zeri will also be able to abuse her ultimate more, so keep that in mind at all times. Finally, we're going to look at some itemization that you can help build to counter Zeri. First off, Serpent's Fang or Shadow Flame. Due to Zeri's passive, she can absorb allied shields and gains movement speed when shielded herself. Shielding can be a huge part of this champion's playstyle, especially when she's paired with teammates who can also abuse this. These anti-shielding items are a fantastic option when playing against this champion. Randuin's Omen or Frozen Heart are also fantastic options. Anything that can slow Zeri's movement or attack speed are ideal, as she focuses so heavily on these stats to do her job properly. When you factor in the extra armor it gives you, it's a win-win. Anathema's Chains is also a great option. Zeri deals a significant amount of damage, especially in the late game, but as we've mentioned before several times throughout this guide, she's very vulnerable to CC. If you're playing someone with Lockdown, this item can be perfect, as not only does it reduce her tenacity against you by 20%, but it also brings down her damage done to you as well. Finally, mobility items are also a fantastic option against Zeri. She's such a speedy champion with a ton of movement and mobility, so any items you can get to try and match that will allow you to deal with her better. That's going to finish off our counterplay guide on Zeri. We hope you enjoyed it and we hope you can put it to good use in the Summoner's Rift. Let us know how you're finding this new champion in the comments below. That's all from us here at Mobilitics and as always, take care.